So what we'll do today is we'll define an enriched uh, failure stream and make sure that we can alert the user uh, whenever we see a large number of failures on a particular URL. And we don't have to, uh, so we'll, we'll implement a very simple algorithm. We'll keep, we'll, uh, keep on tracking the last n failures for a, particular, uh, for a particular URL. And if the elapsed time between the first and the last most recent failures uh, is less than t, then we will raise an alert. Uh, so just, uh, just like that. And to give you an example of that, what that could look like, say we want to raise an alert um, if three failures occur in, in 10 minutes over a, a 10 minutes uh, period, what we'll do is say we have a couple of most recent failures, then a new one come in. We just put it at the end of, the, of, our, of our stack of uh, failure timestamps. And then we notice that the elapsed time between the first failure and the most recent one is actually six minutes which is less than 10 minutes, which is our interval, the window we're, we're looking, the moving, the moving window we're considering. And because of that, we will raise an alert, as easy as that. And if a new failure com comes in and we have a width or of, we're just keeping track of the three most recent failure, what we'll do is we'll get rid of the, of the uh, less, recent, recent, less recent failure and populate uh, the array with the, uh, with the new one. So let's put this into code. Uh, so we need to track the last and failures and if the elapsed time between the first and last most recent failures is less than T, then we raise an alert. Uh, so in order to put us in a, ourselves in a position where we can do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to take the failure stream as an input and then we'll need some sort of uh, a set of parameters that specify how we want to parameterize our uh, our alerting system. We'll keep track of the number of failures. We'll say we have, we're keeping track the, the most recent three failures. And then we'll have some sort of time range, time range of say, for the time mean being, I think 10 seconds will be, a, let's say six. Is that something? Yeah, 10 seconds should be enough. I'm thinking about how often we refresh the, uh, we, we issue HTTP request because we do one call every two seconds. Uh, we're gonna have five calls in uh, 10 seconds. And we know that there's a possibility that we, if we have three consecutive uh, failures, for example, or um, two success, sorry, uh, two failures and then a success and a failure, these are all gonna count as alerts we'll look at what that actually will display on the UI in a second, but at least we know where, where we're starting from, right? So these are alerting uh, run signature, uh, the one we want to uh, make available. And before we move on, I'm actually gonna uh, change the uh, writer done definition to take in the enriched failure stream rather than the enriched success. And maybe also worth doing before going on, if I go back to stats right there. Uh, so let's define alerting. I'm gonna go to the tasks, I define a new file, alerting.cr. And if you think about it, we're gonna be doing something quite similar to what we do in the average response time module. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that for the time being. I'm just gonna call this alerting and things don't change much but before we actually go on and define the logic we just talked about let's see if the if the application compiles just by means of reading a status and then not doing anything with the deck and not doing anything with the moving average and then just sending through a status with alert where we send the status and just true we just send uh, alert on set to true all the time. This is just to see if the compiler can uh, give us an indication of where we need to update our code. So the first thing is that alerting is not known to the main, uh, to our main um, CR file. So what I'll do to make our life easier, I could add a line here saying, hey, import a task alerting. What I'll do instead is I'll get rid of all the task uh, imports and just say, uh, require lib task star so that all the um, CR files in task are going to be imported. 
and that's going to make our life a bit easier for the future and then we have a complaint about failures okay so this is just a spelling uh, issue so failures is going to be plural here And the idea here is we need to go uh, downstream and see whoever is consuming uh, the enriched uh, failure stream, which is task writer, has to know about the events we're publishing, right? And with no surprise, I cannot see any failure on our uh, on our UI, which is which is quite concerning, right? And if we go and look at the way um, the stats writer consumes event from the URL status stream, you can see that at the moment we only match on two types. One is the tuple status checker success and time span, which comes from the moving average uh, task. And the other one is either a failure or a success um, uh, type, which is not what we have anymore. So this when clause needs to change to become alerting and then whatever the alerting type is called. So status with alert, status with alert. And now the received object is gonna have a URL but only inside a status object so if we do this everything should be all right and we should go back to a state where so we are sending an alert always set to true but we're not really using it anywhere so what I'll do is we'll make sure that we're now logging uh, failures that we were doing before and then I'm gonna go and propagate the alert through all the um, through all the uh, the calls that need it so you can see we're back to uh, having the failures. So what I'll do now is I'll make sure we can also pass the status, the alert uh, to the log failure uh, method. So I'll add received dot alert on, which can be either true or false. At the moment, it's always gonna be true, but uh, this is just the start. And then I'm, I'm tracking down where log failure is defined. And in particular, it's defined in stats store. So let's go there. So in stats store, we have a definition of log failure that takes one string, which is the URL. I'm gonna add another variable, another parameter, which is gonna be a Boolean, and it's alert on. And then when we send a new log failure object to our, uh, to our queue, we need to also include the alert on variable uh, okay so the constructor now wants the start sorry the rec dot uh, this is gonna be rec dot alert on is that true Yes, because that's going to be the name of the, the field in log failure. We just defined it. So that's fine. And then we need to update this in another place. So if I try to build now, I'm going to get a compilation error for because I'm not initializing log failure properly. So we need to also pass alert on. And now things are going to be all right. And then the other thing we need to do is you can see we're we're calling log failure with two with two parameters, but we're calling it on the stats object. But the stats object doesn't know about the second uh, the second um, parameter, so we need to go to the stats CR uh, file and add a new parameter alert on, which is a boolean. I know it, I know this is pretty boring, but it's just to show you how the compiler will uh, show us the way when uh, if I control B now, I'm still not using the alert, but I can start doing it in a second. And what we need to do now is we need to use, so if you remember stats is our uh, store, right? So it's our central data structure. And this is where we store average response times. We also need to now store uh, the alert information. Again, you can see here we're using a name tuple at the moment to uh, represent our um, core data type. It would be a good idea to probably upgrade this to a record to make make our life a bit easier and uh, get a bit more uh, useful compilation messages whenever whenever things go wrong, uh, but for the time being, let's let's stick to the name tuple. So alert on is going to be boolean. Mind that there's no space between the name of the uh, of the uh, field in the tuple and the column. It's a pretty big deal. If I do add a 
column, the compiler is going to complain in weird ways, uh, say, oh, I was not expecting, uh, I was expecting a parenthesis rather than, or named argument rather than alert on, and then it can take you a while to understand that uh, all you had to do was to remove the space between alert on and the column. And now that we have the information in the name tuple, what we want is we want to initialize it to something meaningful. So alert on is going to be false by default because we want to have no alert showing uh, at the beginning. And then we want to also update the value whenever it comes in from log failure. So alert on is going to be just changed to alert on. And now if I do this again, everything should compile and we're not gonna see the alert at all. So in order to see the effect of having the alert around, we need to go and update our printer really. So if I go to our printer, printer, there we go. And uh, try and see what's going on here. Uh, you can see we are taking a failure and just displaying the number, the number of failures here, right? What I'll do instead is I will extract alert on I'm gonna call it is gonna be actually I'm gonna call it failure with alert maybe and that's gonna be the failure I'm gonna use string in interpolation so it's gonna be the failure and then I'm gonna do something a bit contrived here so I'll do if the alert on this is the object the name tuple we just defined if alert on is true then i'm going to use the ternary operator and i'm going to print I'm just going to return a star otherwise i'm just going to return an empty string so if i run this again oh sorry and i need to also update uh, the line below to pass the failure with alert uh, to the system to the to the tableau, tableau table Let's look at this. And what I'm expecting is I'm expecting to see the, the asterisk populating every uh, line with a failure. This is because we're just setting the, the value of alert on to true, no matter what, uh, uh, no matter what's going on, no matter the number of failures we've seen. So I'm going to go to alerting now and you can see we're just passing through as, uh, as the states, state of the alert. And so we're seeing the star appearing at every at every single uh, print of the terminal, which is not uh, what we want. But we are now finally in a position where we can appreciate how our implementation of the alerting system will make a difference in this, right? So um, to recap, we want to track the last n failures. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just uncomment this most recent uh, line where we keep uh, track of the most recent failures. And this is gonna be uh, initialized with a size which is the number of failures we want to keep track of right and then what we'll do is we anytime we get a new uh, status in we need to update our most recent um, uh, data structure and uh, because we need to actually keep track of failures by URL we actually need a hash that goes from a string to a deck of time spans or better to a, deck of, to a deck of times and then what we want is to make sure that whenever we um, initialize uh, such w whenever we try and extract a most recent uh, value for a particular URL we get something meaningful so I want to have some sort of initializer here this is the constructor of our hash that takes in a block so an initial capacity and a block it's going to be taking a hash and a key and we need to do side effect on the hash in order to initialize it so whenever one calls most recent uh, square bracket url with a url that has never been seen by the hash uh, we initialize the the particular value uh, uh, in the way that in with, a, with an empty deck it's going to be a deck of time dot new failures so let me just get rid of this. So my bad. Um, and then, so we initialize a new deck with, with size failures and just return it. And I think that's it.
and let's see how, how things go. So the first thing we do is we get a new failure. So what we want to do is we want to shift uh, the new, uh, to shift the, the, the oldest value in most recent if the number of uh, items in most recent is more than the number of failures or better if it's exactly it's greater or equal to the number of failures uh, we want to keep track of so this is not going to have any effect if the most recent um, deck is just being initialized let me just extract the right one so url in this case we want to failure stream receive as hmm surprised uh, the compiler didn't complain but you never know so we are receiving a failure yeah i think it makes sense we were just lucky but we want to actually deal with both successes and failures right so we don't need to do any casting because the type of uh, events uh, or messages coming from failure stream is already either a success or a failure so we receive from the status and then we do most recent status dot url and we're going to get an empty either an empty deck or a deck with a few elements if there are enough elements then uh, if there are failure elements or more then we uh, remove the, the the oldest one otherwise we just move on so and then what we want to do is we want to do most recent status dot url uh, dot push uh, status actually we, we can just push the, the current timestamp I'm, I'm just going to push time dot utc and make an approximation that uh, the time when we made the request is fairly close to the time we're pushing uh, into the most recent um, into the most recent um, uh, data structure so this should be it let me just recap here so let's see if we're doing everything that we need to do so we are tracking the last n failures yes we are tracking the last n failures and then what we want to do is if the difference between the oldest and the newest um, failure is uh, less than a given amount then we want to enable the alert okay so we can do that we can just say alert on equals and i'm gonna say if first thing is we need to have exactly three element in the most recent uh, object so and also let me just extract this and say this is the most recent recent for URL equals this then we go like this because I couldn't take having to pass this around all the time pass the status URL um, all the time through the square brackets so we'll just do if most recent for URL dot size is more equal than failures than the number of failures we're keeping track of and if failures dot last minus failures dot first is less than the given interval which we call time range I'm gonna go to a new line to make this a bit more readable I think the compiler will be alright with that uh, so whatever whatever value of truth we get out of this um, um, of this end operation is going to be uh, telling us if we want the alert to be on or, or not so uh, mind that the first check is just a sanity check we're just checking that we have we're keeping track of enough failures uh, because we want to have a, a minimum number of consecutive well not consecutive failure or of um, uh, failure timestamps so three in the in, in our case but it could be whatever and then so this is really just a sanity check to verify that we've been running the algorithm long enough to have a minimum number of failures and then we just check that the last failure happened um, close enough to the first failure just to comply to the uh, description of our algorithm and then we just pass alert on to our function so I'm gonna 
run this again, what I'm expecting is that the first few, uh, oh yeah, of course. So I don't want failures that last. I want most recent URLs that last. There we go. Doing this again. Okay. There we go. No asterisk, and there we go. At the third failure, we do see the asterisk. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna control C now and show you again what happened. So we have one failure doesn't trigger the alert. Two failures don't trigger the alert. Three failures in 10 seconds do trigger the alert. And so we get the asterisk. And then we keep on seeing the asterisk showing up. And because this URL doesn't exist, we're gonna see that consi consistently, but I invite you to uh, try and uh, give a go at having some sort of a local server running and checking how um, putting the server up and down and responding with success or failure will actually uh, make the alerting, uh, the alert go um, come in and out uh, depending on the number of, success, of uh, failures in a given interval.